Oh, little sneak peek. Okay, sorry. It's the new driveway from the new house. Everyone seems to be getting these daily drivers, but why? Why do you need one? That's what we're talking about today. Hiya, hope you guys are well. This is a view you guys are gonna be getting used to. It's the new driveway from the new house. If you haven't seen my last video, link's gonna be around. I'm moving houses, finally got in my own place with a friend. If this video gets, let's say, a thousand likes, the next video, I'm gonna do a full house tour. Cause I've been moving and I haven't wanted to show the house till everything was done. I re haven't really had time to do vlogs, but I've been doing questions like the last video, which was why I haven't sold my Lotus. And today's video, which is kind of gonna be like, why do you need a daily driver? And kind of a full overview of the Kia Stinger GTS, my new daily driver. Long-term loaner from Kia, which I won in a competition. That video is gonna be around too. So it's not a vlog today. I'm purely gonna answer a question that's been coming up a lot. And then the next one's gonna be a vlog showing you around the house if it works well. A little sneak peek. That's the city there. Our driveway, as you can tell, plenty of space for cars. And then here is the Kia, right here. So you're gonna have to get used to this area. I'm probably gonna do a lot of filming and photos here. As you can tell, there is loads of space for cars. And maybe, I don't know if you can see all the way in the back there, it's the Lotus. I'm not gonna show you anymore the house. Oh, little sneak peek. Okay, sorry. I'm not gonna show you anymore. That will be for the next video if this gets a thousand likes. So smash that like button, guys. Anyways, Kia Stinger GT collected this not long ago at all. I've been driving it around and I wanted to make my mind up before I kind of tell you more about this car. So first of all, I'm gonna talk to you about this car. And then after, the question I get asked a lot is if, if you've got a car, if you've got a nice car, like these cars that cost a lot, these supercars, why do you need a daily driver? What are the advantages of having a daily driver? And I'm gonna rattle off some of the ones I've picked up on since having this car. First of all, this is a Kia Stinger GTS, as you can tell right here. It comes in a diesel, petrol, everything. This is the bi-turbo V6, kind of top of the line version. That means it's boasting 365 horsepower and does not 16, 4.7 seconds. For a car this heavy, that's really, really impressive. The main features on this are A, the way it looks, the styling, is, is awesome. I really think it looks kind of like a Panamera from or an A7 from this line. It's kind of a cut-off coupe hatchback saloon. I've just literally listed every type of car I could come up with and put them into one. And I think it looks really quite nice. It's got these almost Maserati Gran Turismo-esque lights around back, the quad exhausts, and then some really nicely finished rims complemented by Brembo brake calipers. This one's in Nardo, well, I don't know what the official Kia color is for it, but it kind of looks like Nardo gray by Audi, with an interior finished in a burgundy. Before this drags on too much, I'm gonna to talk to you about some of my favorite features of this car. It's got, as you can tell right here, cameras all over. There is another one, under the wing mirror, right? There's a little camera, I don't know if you can see it. That means that you basically get 360 degree view and you can have it on whilst you drive. You can, if you're, for example, if your boot is so full that you can't see out the rear window, you can put the rear facing camera on and have that as your rear view mirror whilst you drive, which is actually surprisingly useful. So that is one of my favorite features, which for this car, they started around 32,000 pounds without options, but they come pretty loaded up. So it's really, really well priced. It being a Kia, people, get so surprised when they see it. Everyone, the most commonly asked question I'm getting with this is, really, Kia, is it a Kia? So yeah, it looks great, it goes Plenty fast enough for a car of this size and weight. It's got an automatic gearbox, eight speed gearbox, and you have flappy paddles. It's actually their own gearbox. Kia developed their own gearbox. They haven't gone and got in a ZF gearbox or anything. They've developed their own, and it works really quite well. Nothing really special to report, but it does the job very nicely. A few other favorite things. With those cameras, it's got this amazing adaptive cruise control system, which works even in traffic. A lot of them will stop working under sort of 30 kilometers an hour. The adaptive cruise control will just say, look, it's up to you at this speed, I can't handle it. Whereas this car, even in traffic, it will come to a full stop and then follow the car in front of you in traffic, which means that basically I'm always on adaptive cruise control and it's just the most relaxing car to drive. It's also got lane assist, which is a really nice feature, which basically holds you in your lane. So it'll detect where the white lines are and then effectively you're still steering, but you're just holding onto the steering wheel and it's doing most of the effort for you. Doesn't sound like much, but on long journeys of which I've already done had this car a couple of weeks now. I posted about it not long ago, but I've had it maybe two weeks, three weeks, and I've done 2,000 miles already. So I've really, really been able to use all of these different features and they're fantastic. I'm thinking about blacking out all of this chrome stuff. Um, so for example, chrome here, chrome on the wing mirrors, um, and potentially, I don't know if I can do the wheels. I don't know how happy Kia will be with me if they get the car back in a total state. But all of the chrome, I'm thinking of blacking out and then blacking out the windows. 
and maybe a cheeky little tint on these these little bad boys around back. Inside, they've actually finished it with some really nice leather. Um, so this is the upgraded leather, so you've got an embossed GT sign in there. But it's got loads of storage, so you've got, I don't know, why do I have butter there and knives? I have no idea. So that's the Kia. We'll talk about it more when we're driving this specific car. But then the question I've been getting a bunch is, why do you need a daily driver? Why have Kia given you this car? Well, simply because having a Lotus, so I have a Lotus Exige Sport 380. If you're new, you maybe haven't seen it, but it's a hardcore two-seater track car. And the reason why, I mean, you can drive that every day. I'm not saying you can't, but the reason why I find it so useful to be able to spare a bit and in this case, I've been so lucky because they've lent it to me, but if you can get a daily driver, uh, the following. Obviously, the main thing is practicality. So, let's start off with the first bit round front. This right here, ground clearance. On a daily driver, you can go anywhere. Speed bumps aren't a problem. You can come up like, this is quite a steep driveway right here. In the Lotus, I have to go all the way around on this side. But see, I can just go straight down. Any bumps, any roads, any off-roading, if ever you end up going slightly off-road because you've lost track, not a problem in your daily driver. Whereas, in your supercar, you need to almost plan ahead which roads you're gonna take so that you don't encounter any unexpected speed bumps or massive potholes or anything like that, which can be a real pain and actually very limiting. So if you're driving around anywhere and you don't have to worry, that's the first big point with a daily driver. The big one, five doors. I know there's only four, but we count the boot as well. This is key, having five doors and being able to put your friends in the back. When I was driving around with just the Lotus, if I had more than one friend coming over, so if a friend was bringing a friend, I couldn't pick them up at the airport, I couldn't bring them out for dinner, I couldn't do anything like that, whereas now, I can, with this car, I can take them out to dinner, we can go anywhere, we can all listen to music, we can be in the same car, we don't need to book an Uber to just go anywhere. That is the main big reason to have a car like this. Also, I know some supercars have rear seats, but you have rear seats which are just so much more spacious. We've got heated seats in this one. You can put this back here so if ever your passengers have a drink, they can be comfortable. It just makes such a big difference. And, as well as a huge boot. In this case, the Kia has an absolutely massive boot. Got a gym bag in there and some rubbish. This is literally heaven for someone who drives around in a sports car most of the time. I could barely fit more than a gym bag and maybe a couple of groceries in the Lotus. Whereas now, if I'm picking people up at the airport again, not only can I take them and their friend, but I can take their luggage as well. I found myself unpacking bags to put clothes in the boot of the Lotus to then put the bag on the passenger seat lap of my passenger. Does that make any sense? You can put the seats down even with this and have the whole thing so you can go skiing, you can do any of this stuff, which is just not a worry. And that's the main reason why I found it so important to get a daily driver as well. I could bring my friends and I could bring all their bags. If we come around to the driver's side, here's another big difference. First of all, you've got little things like this car has the button here, so you've got keyless go. So you just need the key in your pocket and you can go straight away can't really have that on the Lotus. Then these, <laughs> these seats. The ones in the Lotus are carbon backed, real buckets, whereas this is so comfortable if you're on a nine hour drive, 10 hour drive, or just with your friends cruising around and stuck in traffic for an hour, you're not gonna get any back pain. So daily driver, another great point is to have comfortable seats. Speakers, now I know a lot of supercars will have really good speaker systems, but often to save weight, like they did in the Lotus, they just put in literally the worst system they can come up with and hope that you won't complain about it too much. Whereas in daily drivers, like this one, we've got a full Harman and Kardon system. I mean, there's just three speakers even just on this door. One, two, three. Here's another difference I've got between this and the Lotus. Power steering. Now, power steering is not ideal if you're on the track. So in that case, you take the supercar. But for driving around, for parking, for maneuvering, power steering is amazing. The Lotus has driven me insane in the past. Being in town, having to do like a three-point turn or anything, with no power steering is a total nightmare. So now, I just take this. If I know I'm going anywhere where I may need to park somewhere tight or maneuver, daily driver. Storage, which I mentioned even in the cabin. There's nowhere, there's no glove box in the Lotus, there's nothing. So if I've got a bottle of water, if I'm going to Starbucks and getting a coffee or anything like that, I can't put it anywhere. This guy got two cup holders, got plenty of space in the doors, can do anything. Technology wise also, this cable, Apple CarPlay. I've got a screen so I can put my sat nav, which I do not have in the Lotus. Let's get driving for the rest, because the rest is mostly driving stuff. Why don't I maneuver out of here with my lovely power steering? 
let's go. I'm so excited to show you guys the house. So we drive out, this first road is not best, and that brings me on to my first point, suspension. In a sports car, most likely in order to make it faster around the track and better on the corners, you'll have some form of very stiff suspension. Now in a car like this, I've got five different modes. I've got Eco, Smart, Comfort, Sport, Sport Plus, and I can switch so that I can adapt to whatever kind of driving mood I'm in. Right now, is very relaxed. Squeezing past a the truck there. Brings me on to another point, visibility. Sports cars, the Lotus, I've got sl slits in the back, carbon slits which look epic. And a huge wing, again, looks epic. Can't see anything out of the back. Can barely see out of the windows because they're so small and you are so low. Car like this, got my rear view mirror, I got my 360 parking aids. I can literally just see everything. And that makes a big difference on a daily basis. Financially speaking, a daily driver, even though it seems extravagant to have two cars, can save you a lot of money because you're saving a lot of fuel. This car has an eco mode where it sips away at the fuel, even though it's quite heavy and quite a powerful engine. So this is maybe not the best example for that. But a car like the Lotus, or if you're getting a Porsche, a Ferrari, a Lamborghini, any of that, most likely it's not gonna be great on petrol. Especially if you're, when you take it out, you're probably driving it harder than you would drive something like this. So financially, can make sense in terms of getting your petrol prices down. I touched upon my next point briefly at the beginning of the video, but gadgets, gadgets, you get a lot more of them in a car like this, in a daily driver, and that's why I was so excited to get this car. So for example, the adaptive cruise control. No way I can get that in the Lotus. I've got cruise control, but it's very on and off. It's not consistent in the speed, and it's hard to set up. Whereas with this, I just press one button, it'll adapt to the speed, it'll adapt to the speed limits, it'll follow the car in front, and it's just so easy. Whereas in the Lotus and in a lot, for example, the Batmobile, which was based on a Gallardo, if you have a Gallardo, no cruise control. And a lot of other cars, you'd be surprised, a lot of other sports cars do not have something as simple as cruise control. And if you're driving on the motorway every day to work, it's really a small thing which makes a big difference in the long run. I think you get my point. What I'm saying is, you get a lot of hate sometimes if you end up having two cars, one maybe not as exciting as the other, and everyone always wants to see you driving in a sports car, but people do not realize that a sports car, whilst you can and whilst I have, I daily drove my Lotus, uh, what was it, an Elise, for a year with a straight pipe on it. I mean daily, I was, before I got this, pretty much daily driving my Lotus Exige. And I just got to the point where I was like, there are so many things. You pay so much for a car like that and you miss out on so many basics almost. They just make sense to have another car. So that's why I'm so grateful to Kia for having loaned me this car. And I'm very excited to be able to spend more time with it. And that's why I believe that if you're in the market for a sports car, unless you're, you, know, you, you don't have a lot of friends you need to bring around, you don't have a family, then make the most of it, enjoy it. But I guarantee you after six months, you're gonna want to be able to be in the position to get the luxury that is a daily driver as well. But that's why we all love them. That's why we all strive towards being able to get one. Goal one is always getting a supercar. Goal two is always getting a daily driver. And that's why I feel like it's a topic people haven't really spoken about. Everyone seems to be getting these daily drivers, but why? Why do you need one? That's what we're talking about today. I'm not gonna blab on for too long. I just wanted to make the point of a few things I've noticed since I've had this car, which I love and other reason why it's so easy for me to distinguish when I'm going to take this car and when I'm going to take the Lotus. If I'm going into town, I want to pose or I want to drive around the country. I want to go on a proper Sunday drive. Of course, I'll take the Lotus. Even though this is a sporty sedan, will never match something like the Lotus. Whereas if I'm just, I drive my uh, housemate to work every morning. Um, then I come, I go to the gym, then I come back, I film, I do some admin work. That's when I use this car for that sort of stuff. It was a concept that I was the first to say, why would I spend, you know, extra money on a daily driver, whereas I could spend that on just upgrading my sports car or anything like that. I am totally convinced now, and I hope you guys understand this. We're going to be back with the vlogs now. I have pretty much moved into the house, so I'm going to actually have time to breathe, which will be lovely, because that's fairly important to do, and time to come back up with some vlogs. So, next video. Do you guys want to see the house? Because I, I really want to show it to you guys. That's it for today. Please remember to like if you want to see the house tour. Subscribe if you aren't already. It's good to be back, guys, making videos. And uh, I appreciate all your support, always and forever. Thanks for everything. Cheers. Bye -bye.
You're getting way too big for your boots You're never too big for the boot I got the big size toes on my feet Your face ain't big for my boots Kick up the you Man know that I kick up the you Them boy they try to suck the truth